Hello and welcome to part two of the tavern. Glad you could join me. And this is just going to be a quick intro because there's a lot to cover. So let's get to it. All right, this is where I want to use a hot glue gun and I'm just going to glue it to one wall. So there you have it, that's the four corner pieces and now I'll start doing the sides. I'm gonna put in her starts. I always believe there's a place for uh, things that you can prefab and this is one of those situations where I like her starts, I think they're cool. Uh, I'll even make buildings out of the entire uh, molds that I have. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But, I'll, but my main thing I like to do is I like to use her starts as a complementary thing and not as a primary. Now, if you're wondering, I did dry fit these. I already make sure they fit. Silly me, I thought I'd turn the camera on, but I didn't. I had already kind of pre-made, well, just determined what I wanted the fireplace to look like. I cut the mat I cut the mantle out. I measured it in there and put it where I wanted and knew, knew where I wanted it to go. And then I put those two pieces in. And then I realized, hey, the camera's not on. So my apologies. We'll continue assembling. Okay, now I really want to make sure that. I assemble this the correct way. So I'm not gonna put any glue on this. I'm gonna put glue right here instead. That way I can just pick this up and move it right over top of it. And I wanna make sure it's centered. So I'm gonna, or do my best to make sure it's centered. All right, I took it out of camera for a minute just cause I wanna make sure that I knew where this was gonna go. And I, so I drew lines on there with a <clears throat> permanent marker. You can tell it's not centered quite as much as I'd like it, but I'm not gonna fix it. And there's a gap in the middle right there, but that's not gonna matter in the long run. And I'm missing a little bit up here, but that'll be fine too. Um, there we have it, fireplace. All right, I wanna start putting the wood paneling up. I've gonna, uh, I'm gonna ahead and put some kickboards down. And there's gaps in them because I wanna be able to put some beams up. And I don't wanna button up against the kickboard. I want them against the wall. So I've gone ahead and done that. And on this side, you'll notice that there's an opening here because that's where I'm gonna put the door. So I don't want a kickboard going across there. And I'm just gonna have the beam here and I'm gonna put the paneling or wood siding the rest of the way across. Now one thing when I'm measuring this to the top, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line on the back. But when I do that, I have so, there's so much stuff around my desk. I want to come down a quarter of an inch because I want to put a cross beam across the top and I don't want it, I want it to rest on top. So I'm going to cut it right there instead of right there. Now I'm just going to line it up so I can make a straighter edge. I'm just going to follow this whole line. So I have my first beam. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the rest. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here. I'm trying to do it with my right hand so I'm not as steady. I'm just going to follow the line. I already have in there. Now I put it in, I'm just making sure that I am doing the side that is not finished. That would kind of be a bummer to do all that work and have it not show up. Now I start gluing in the 
the siding. It's gonna pre measure and see how this works for all of them. That works pretty much works for all of them, so I'm just gonna use that as a template. I'm gonna draw me a line. I'm gonna start this way and work over. That way if I have a narrow piece, I'm just gonna over here is where I'll cut it so it's really not noticeable to be in a corner. This is where we're at so far. Use the technique to carve part of the wood for the door, uh, put the door in so I can eventually put hinges and a doorknob. Um, pretty much stuff that I already showed the technique on how to do. And these are the, some more hewn logs that are in place that kind of just add to the ambiance or the effect of, uh, or the feel. I don't know, I guess there's multiple ways you can say that. Uh, to this tavern. But the nice thing is, what I'm gonna do is these are gonna be able to come out. So you can take them out, move your figs around, put them back uh, if you want for when you're chatting with the DM or whatever the case may be. But I wanna add more uh, flair to this, so I'm gonna put some 45s in here for support, like you would see in um, Barnwood Builders when Mark Bone, they take part, barns apart, they have that support. I don't know what it's technically called, but that's where I'm getting the idea from. So I wanna do a 45 in there and probably do about an inch maybe we will see nice thing about this board right here is it has a 45 line going through it already so i can just mark that 45 line and just cut that i checked the bottom i checked to make sure that's the side that i didn't finish because that's going to face down so you won't be able to see it um i've screwed up enough on this that i don't want to screw up more because Making these logs look like they're human logs sucks. It's time consuming with an exacto knife, but I think it's worth it. I just had to get a better angle on it so I can actually see where it's gonna fit because I only want to glue the bottom side. I don't want to glue the top because I want to make it so these come out. Well, that's a freaking lot of glue. It's hot. Fart of passages. Not recommended, kids, to put your finger on hot glue. All right, I'm gonna clean that up, then I'm gonna do the other three, and we return after the commercial break. All right, so the support beams are in, and now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I've seen this in some uh, log cabin homes, well, some modern log cabin homes, where they'll come in and they'll put supports or like a plating and they'll kind of rivet it or bolt it on to the joins and uh, in that to just reinforce it. And it's also for looks as well. What I did is I have some uh, evergreen scale, mo uh, evergreen scale model sheet styrene. This happens to be 75 mil thick and uh, I'm gonna cut some strips off of this or actually I already did, I cheated. Uh, I used a straight edge, I measured um, six sixteenths, and I just wanted it shy. I think it was shy under a. Um, actually, I lied. <laughs> I met. I don't know where I got six sixteenths from. I measured uh, just under a quarter of an inch, just a little bit more than three sixteenths. Holy crap, that was way off. <laughs> anyway, I did that. I measured a strip. I just wanted it shy of the quarter inch uh, piece of basswood that we have here, just so it's just barely in. Because when you round the edges. If you do it exactly a quarter inch, it's going to stick off and kind of look a little odd. I want it just a little bit in. And then I... Uh, oh, I know where I got 616s from. <laughs> That's how long I made the pieces. So 
Um, I need to get my numbers and my measurements right. And so they're, <laughs> so they're, uh, man, I'm having a good night. So they're six sixteenths long. And what I want to do now is I want to give the illusion of rivets. Uh, so there's this, it's by Tandy Leather Company. It's a hand sewing leather punch. And it gives the illusion, I'm gonna move this out of the way, of rivets. It kind of takes a little bit of getting used to. And I use a little bit thicker sheet styrene just because I want uh, it to be more prominent when I paint it and to show up. So kind of have to just kind of gauge it. And just do it a little bit at a time until you get the punch you want. But it gives the illusion of a rivet. And then you do the next one. And now you have two rivets. So I'm gonna do the other side. And if they're a little bit off, because of the scale, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So what I wanna do is I don't wanna glue this top piece. In fact, I actually wanna kind of bow part of the top part out a little bit more for what I'm gonna do. So there you have that piece. What I also like to do as well, when I go to apply small pieces of plastic like this, is I like to stab my X-Acto knife like that. And then I use uh, just Loctite super glue. I'm gonna apply it to one end. Maybe, come on. Holy stubborn glue, Batman. All right, we're gonna take a commercial break so I can teach this glue some glue a lesson. Holy crap, come on, glue. All right, the glue's smarter than me. I thought this was my, the one I've been using, but it's a new one. I hadn't cranked the top down to punch the hole, punch the hole, so, you, you know, not as bright as the glue is. Well, that's on crooked, but I'm not fixing it. So the idea behind this is, is I'm gonna put that on there and hopefully the, other, the rest of them are straighter. And so I can take this on and off and it gives that illusion. I'm not gonna glue it to this piece because I wanna still be able to take that off. But I'll give the illusion and so that's out a little bit so I can stick this piece of wood between the two. So one thing I wanna note, oh, obviously you can see they're not straight, but it is what it is. It, <clears throat> after I glued them on, I want them to be a little bit stronger. So I came in, with the glue and I put a bead here and a bead there on all these. Uh, and the gel works really good because it's obviously a gel. And then I came back with the sheet, that piece of sheet styrene and just cleaned it out and wiped it off with a paper towel and went and did that with all of them so the bead doesn't dry up. That way it just doesn't beat up and your log doesn't stick in there. <laughs> I say log. Your piece of basswood doesn't uh, stand out or not fit in. I wanted more reinforcement on these pieces just because they're going to be uh, they're going to be a lot of heavy use with it. Well, I don't know if heavy use, but some use with it. I just want to be a little bit more durable. So anyway, I just want to show that. Now we'll move on to the rest. All right, this is where I was going to have the torch part of the tutorial, but it was such a screw up and uh, not worth it, not worth taking the time. So I just want to be really brief. I will make a separate torch tutorial to cover this here shortly. I've already thought of a better way to do it, and the way I did it uh, just sucked really bad. So hopefully you understand, and I will uh, I will make another torch tutorial as far as the actual structure, not the fire part of it, but the actual uh, uh, torch itself that uh, is it, it just so bad. It, it, was, it was bad, bad. And I, I should have did a I, I should have piloted it, but I didn't. I did it on camera, and it's just so bad. But I will make another one, and I've already thought of a better way to do it. So. Uh, we'll get back to the tutorial. Well, the sadly sad looking torch is now gonna get a flame in it. I'm a big proponent of using toilet paper and white glue and a little bit of water. This was, uh, I first saw this style of, or this process in making bed rolls probably about 30 plus years ago. It was in a diorama magazine. And I've used it to make bed rolls ever since and other things like foliage and all kinds of different things. Very, very useful. I don't want a lot of water in this initially. I probably should have mixed the water in a little, little bit better. That's okay. I don't want this very runny or very, I want a pretty solid, well not solid, but just want it easily pliable. 
And I'm just going to kind of wad up a bit right here and start to work it into the flame or into the torch. I'm going to try to kind of hold the bottom or parts of it. I'm just going to pull it up. The other thing I can do too is if I wanted to, I could just leave this how it is and come back a little bit later and apply some more to the top. All right, I want to make some candles for inside the tavern as well. I made a little shelf, just cut some basswood, I grain the top of it, and I cut some more 45s and just glued that on there with some of the gel control glue, uh, super glue from Loctite. And this is Milliput, it's, it's a two part epoxy that you can buy. And uh, I'm gonna mix that together for like the candle wax at the bottom that's been melted. And this is uh, 2.4 millimeter tubing or three and th uh, 3 second. And this is a, a, a small styrene rod, but I can't remember the size because I can't find my back for it, but it's teeny. And I'm just gonna make some candles out of this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna kind of rough up the edge a little bit, like it's the top of a candle. I'm gonna do the same with this, gonna kind of 45 a little bit. Add some, uh, Beating wire, 24 gauge. Just gonna put a dab of glue in the top of this. I've never made candles before, so I'm just experimenting. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna put it all the way down to where it's barely coming out like that, for a wick. I'm not gonna do anything for these smaller ones. I'll end up probably just painting a black dot. I'm gonna mix the mill putt together. All right, now that I have my mill putt, I'm just gonna use a sculpting tool and just apply it. What I might actually do, I've done this before, I'm just gonna put a dab of super glue right there and then glue my mill putt there. That way I don't have to worry about it. One thing you can do is you can get the edge of your tool wet so the mill putt doesn't stick to it. I just want to force them over the edge, like it's been there for a long time. Come back with my candle. Cut that off there. I'm gonna do the one, I want three candles. Like I said, I don't want to work in odd numbers. I'm sorry, I don't want to work in a positive number, I want odds. So there's your candles. We'll do more of those and add them around inside the tavern and see how it looks. All right, so we've got some, added some candles here and there. Put one up here on the fireplace mantle. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some taxidermied animals in here. I wanted the stag for the from the Whiz Kids, but uh, there's some scenic settlers or setters, scene setters that uh, I found up at a local craft store. And I want—I was specifically wanted an elk head, and so we're gonna take these out of the packages, and I'm gonna show you probably some places that, that uh, I'm thinking of putting them. What I want to do is I want to put a shelf, like right up here, and that's where the wolf's gonna go. So it's like a taxidermied wolf, like you see in a, maybe like a 
a restaurant or a tavern or something like that. But I wanted that because I felt that I would give it more of a tavern feel. So I'm going to make some shelves. I'm going to mount those to it. And they're just going to be simple shelves, just a flat piece of wood and some 45s underneath. So I will show you after I'm done. All right, the shelves and the animals are put up. So uh, I couldn't find, I want a cougar. Couldn't find a better cougar in the amount of time frame. If uh, WizKids ever comes out with a cougar, I'll, I'll use that. And you have your fox, and you have your wolf, and then you have your deer head, your uh, your white tail, and you have your elk, and you have your badger. So that's done. And one thing I did do uh, is I put up, I used the hewn log technique, and I did put up these uh, on the support beams. I also used the rivet technique. And I put some rivets up and I used that, I cut out a piece of sheet styrene and glued some beaded wire to the uh, sheet styrene for a handle as well down there so that you can see what the, so you can tell it's a door. I used some uh, styrene tubing, actually it was rods to make the hinges. But one of the things I, I, I want and you can comment below is, uh, name of this tavern i'm thinking of uh throw it out there and you can comment below if you have a, a name you'd like to uh i'll make this tavern and i'll put i'll make the sign and have the tavern name hung up on one of these cross beams but uh let me know what you think and put comments below Well, that was the end of part two, and I hope you made it this far, and hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something from it, and if you enjoyed it, uh, let us know. Uh, you can comment below if you have any questions, comments uh, about the tutorial. Uh, sorry about the torches. There was a royal screw-up, so I'm going to make another tutorial just on the torches themselves. Uh, it would have been an unnecessary addition to this tutorial because they would have sucked. But so that being said, if you uh, enjoy the content and what you see, support us, like us, uh, follow us, subscribe to us, uh, hit the notification bell, share us. But I'm going to make this short and sweet and so we can get on to part three. I really didn't want to make a three parter, but it's a, it turned into a three parter. And there's just so much content and I didn't want to add all the painting to the end of this one. Um, so it's going to be a three-parter, and um, that's about it. Uh, other than remember what my mother always always say, is anybody going to do art? Ciao. Cool fire. So they're nice. You say so, dude. What? Southern Knights. Sorry, dude.